going to uh, Revelation. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornications with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her jealousy. Who is this? Is this not the world trade building? Is this not the United Nations? Our people made rich by buying and selling here, if you don't believe me, ask what's his name? Gaddafi, not Gaddafi, uh, Saddam Hussein. America told the whole world, don't sell them nothing. <coughs> what they call it? Sanctioning. Sanctioning. Cut them off. Like Revelation chapter 13 says, whoever doesn't have the mark of the beast will not be able to what? Buy or sell no more in thee. So a man can stand up and tell people, starve that man to death. And everybody's afraid to sell him stuff because they will be cut off. That ain't a revelation of revelation manifesting in front of your eyes. They know it. A man said, don't let him buy or sell no more because he doesn't want to wear the mark of the United Nations and fall under their laws. Is that not happening? Am I making this up? Listen. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of fornication. People come over here from China in their clothes and in their tradition. They come from India, from Sudan, Egypt, London, Germany, Holland. And within a matter of years, they're out of their customs, out of their traditions out of their food, out of their God, and out of their damn mind. <laughs> you follow? Because they get seduced by the fornication of this vicious house. It strips people. Next thing you know, you see a bunch of Chinese people with blonde hair. A <laughs> whole bunch of Negroes with perms <laughs> and I repeat it's not permanent so they should call it a temp because <laughs> in three months you got to do it again if it was a perm it would be there one time and there forever so they're lying to you it's not a permanent it's a temp you would be and then you're extending it I hope I hurt nobody's feelings. So the way. Let me go on down. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sin, and that ye receive not of her plagues. That's what's going on now in the country. Plagues. AIDS. Herpes, syphilis, gonorrhea, and diseases, they're not mentioning to you. Because you ain't ready for them yet. Food is dying. Hell in Georgia last month. Hell like this. Italy landslides, mudslides, earthquakes. More tornadoes in one year than ever in the history of the world. Right or wrong? Right. Nature is shaking her shoulders at man. Look at these bugs, locusts. We'll be back in the book of Exodus somewhere. <laughs> death, the plague of death. People are dying. They said that AIDS is now called an epidemic in the black community. You hear me? Out of every seven people of the, of the whole United States, three of them catch AIDS of blacks, between 14 and 44. Think about that. The 
Is that not an epidemic? How do we stop it? You tell you all to stop screwing? I got grown kids. Tell them to stop screwing like, <laughs> okay, well. <Bob. laughs> you. you did it, look at us. <laughs> all the adults here know what I'm talking about. We come from a different day and time than you do. But we can see the plagues. The food is going bad. The crops are not growing properly. That's long term. There's no two in the computer. They got to recalibrate the computers in the year 2000. It's going to shut down all kinds of things. And as billions and billions and billions of dollars are put up to reconfigure the figures in the computer. And the country is ran by computers today. The world. Internet. A spider web on the back of the dollar bill. Yes, we are in the day of plagues. People walking around with all kinds of rashes that you can't identify. The doctors can't identify them. Doctors seeing things that hospitals now they've never seen before. They look at it and say, whoo. <laughs> now that's serious. When a doctor goes, whoo, you got a problem. Doctors are resigning. I had a brother talk to me yesterday. I saw him in a restaurant. He said, Paul, I'm thinking about becoming a barber. I said, you want to touch people? You want to touch people's heads? With rashes and wingworms and all these diseases? You actually want to touch somebody's head? The art now is to avoid touching people. Be friendly. No kisses. No hugs. Speak. Be polite. Don't touch me. <laughs> Do you understand the importance of that? Yes. I'm afraid to get on a basketball court. It's frightening, man. You run a full court and you start sweating, and niggas turn his head and that spit go in your mouth. <laughs> Say it can't happen. Imagine if a nigga got jerry curls up there, it's all greasy. <laughs> And that nigga got age, guess what? They'll say, no, it doesn't, it doesn't, age cannot be transmitted. Some of that, these people here find out how age can be transmitted, then they tell us. Now they're saying, well, certain mosquitoes don't die immediately after they sting people. Certain, certain strands of mosquitoes that are moving to America from Africa. Why? Because the climate is changing. This is tropical. Look. This is tropical. There's going to be more insects. That means more diseases. More plagues. It's going to get worse before it gets better. But you were warned. You hear me? Said. <coughs> For her sins have reached Unto heaven, and that would be Orion. In the, if you look, in the, look it up in the uh, uh, what do you call it? Logos Bible or online, bring the word up to look it up. And God has remembered her iniquity. The sins of the world has gotten so bad that they are sin like the like the scent of incense burners, and God is remembering. Think about God is remembering her iniquity. I'll tell you. I don't want this. I want, I want this to tell you. Because there's another time in here where God got to that point. And what did he say? The evils of man was evil continuously. So I must destroy this man. This quote is saying the same thing. That the evils have gotten to the point where they went to very Orion, and God remembers when man was this evil before. When Sodom and Gomorrah and Jethro, and that's what we call it, uh, Jericho and Babylon and the wicked city were ruling. Well, that's why they refer to this as Babylon. Because they're taking you back to that point where they will have to destroy. And Babylon did not come 
after the Bible. The city of Babylon existed before the Bible. Read the Bible. You find out that this book is based on Judaic culture, not Egyptian culture. The Egyptians had a culture, like I said earlier, when Abraham got there, they didn't start with their Adam, because they, they didn't even know, uh, uh, what is it, the Pharaoh didn't even know who Moses' God was. He said, my God's name is uh, I am that I am. He said, really? <laughs> well, which one is he? And it came out, by the time they got to the book of Revelation, that the God that uh, his life was talking about was the God I'm with. Because Revelation 3.14 says it. They use the actual Egyptian deity Amun. And every Christian, at the end of every prayer, gives praise to Amun Ra. They say Amen. Every Muslim gives praise to Amun Ra. He says Amen. Amen. And if you look it up, you find out that that is the uh, Egyptian deity Amun Ra. The sun. God. Want me to correlate the sun to Jesus for you? Or do you remember those classes? Huh? Because you can match Jesus up with the sun? Exactly. The sun sets, Jesus dies. The sun raises, Jesus resurrects. Jesus walks the water, the sunlight walks the water. Jesus multiplies the bread, the sun causes Horus, horizon, horoscope, Egyptian mysteries, Horus, that's your Jesus. Also called in Babylon, or among the Sumerians, Tammuz. One and the same. People borrowing people's cultures and laying them over themselves the same way. The nation of Islam borrowed Islam and laid it over Christianity. And people really think they belong to a Muslim group. And if you study Arabic and read it, you'll find out that the five percent or the gods of the earth, they broke all from the nation of Islam to Clarence 13X, and now we have a fraction of a faction that will tell you they're right and be ready to fight. About being right when they're wrong. Hello. You with me? says how much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her, for she said in her heart, I am a queen. The word queen means prostitute. Look it up. And am no widow and shall not see sorrow. This people they're talking about have went to Vietnam and caused the Viennese problem. Went to Hiroshima and Nagasaki and caused those people problems. Went to Panama and caused them problems. Went to Grenada and caused them problems. Now they're in India and in Arabia and in Iraq. Where don't they go and cause sorrow? And hardship and then boast that nobody can take us down and that what she said it's easy and I'm going with it it's easy to find out who this is calling the devil and a wicked people and it says come out of her be not partakers of her sins let me tell you how you do not partake of her sins you don't identify with their God or her devil. If you identify with their gods, you must identify with their devil. If you believe in their God, you must believe in their concept of a devil. Now, if you say I'm a Christian, you with me? If you say that I'm a, uh, what is a Christian, right? What do Christians believe about the devil? Stop before you start, you know, you know, according to Christianity in the Bible, where did the devil come from? Huh? He fell from heaven. Who created the devil? The next question would be why? 
So religion leaves you at that point where it does not make sense. Why would you create a being that's going to cause all of this that's going on in the world? They can't answer it. I say again, once you accept their concept of God, then you must accept their concept of the devil. Muslims have the same fool's belief, and so do Jews. You got to give them back all of their concepts and set the concept of belief and fact on what you have experienced. Now, if you have never seen a flying saucer, don't believe anybody who says they have, including me, until you have the experience. Now, you say, well, Papa, I love you. I want to trust you. Thank you. But don't bet on it, only on the things I confirm for you. Now, you may say, well, man, since 1970, you've been teaching us and predicting events and all of them happen. So more than likely, the next thing you say is what happened. Fine. That's your own conviction. I am not going to tell you to believe in flying sources if you haven't seen it. Who here has seen a flying saucer? with their own eyes. See, some of us have. Some of y'all haven't. So we sound crazy <laughs> to you. And you sound crazy to us for not believing it with all of the stacked up evidence that the government shows you on television. They call it classified. The government created a whole called Project Blue Book and put a billion dollars in it. There's a whole goon Air Force base that nobody can go into. Well, they're over there testing um, stealth. They already got stealth. They're going to test something they already used on the people in Iraq. What are they doing with it now? Oh, the Roswell, that was just some dummies in a weather balloon. And it goes on and on. And millions of people all over the world are being abducted. And they all are saying the exact same thing and describing the exact same people, whether it's in Hindi, or Arabic, or Spanish, or French, or Italian, or German, whatever language they're speaking, they say the same thing. They say little men. I think they're men, but they had no apparent sexual organs. With big heads some grayish or brownish in complexion with large eyes and little slits. Some had five fingers, some had four. Some had three, some had like claws, which means there's some type of uh, mutation or evolution or gravitation or genetic experiment going on amongst them also. But millions of people all over the world, not just crazy people, scientists, doctors, reverends, policemen, what else? President. Military presidents, Carter, our Georgia boy, confirmed he saw a UFO. And so did Reagan, and so did Kennedy, and so did Truman, and so did your boy Elvis Presley, and so did Jimi Hendrix, and so did Marvin Gaye. There's a whole book of all the stars that saw them. You listen to their music and cry with them and make love to them. But when they say, I believe in the UFO, oh, he's crazy there. <laughs> Marvin Gaye said, what's going on? Save the children. I love that. Yeah. I believe in the UFO. Oh, the boy crazy. <laughs> what are the chances of people all over the world speaking a different language who've never come in contact with each other, having the same experience? What is the chance? <laughs> all these people got together and conspired? <coughs> why is the question. Why? What would be the reason? Uh, why would a guy in Germany and a guy in Mexico have the exact same story? I mean, the exact same story. What? How? In Puerto Rico, Chupacabra. How? And all these people in Port, everybody in Puerto Rico is crazy, right? Farmers, villages who have no interest in the public or the media say, yeah, I saw one run by. A bloodsucker, they call it. 
But y'all who haven't had the experience, look at us, you call us crazy. <clears throat> we wonder why you haven't had the experience. Let me see them hands again. The ones who have had the experience, some type of UFO or, or phenomenon. I'm saying, you know, quite a few of us have. And it's frightening. Because when I was a little kid, and my sister's probably sitting out here right now somewhere, she'll tell you, when I was a little kid, I used to disappear for weeks. <laughs> I said, that's what's sitting right back there. Is that true? What did y'all used to do? Tell the truth. Give her a mic so she can tell them. It's beat the hell out of you. the Hey, she's going to have to be a witness. What would y'all do? When you came back, you were spanking. <laughs> a spanking, they call it. Okay, when you disappeared, what did you think? We didn't know what happened to him. When you come back, he would have, like, heavy nosebleeds and stuff like that. And um, he was, as a kid then, saying that he was obsessed. And we were like, yeah, right. And <laughs> so, this is true. Believe me, and he was a little kid not knowing anything about this. There was no TV, no media about abductions and stuff like that. And this is what. Don't tell him that. That tells how old I am. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> no TV. <laughs> no TV. <laughs> <laughs> him and Jesus were sitting on the couch by the other day. Hey, Jesus was sitting on the couch by the other day. It's real. And those of us who had the real experiences and suffered the traumas of it, all our lives, it ain't no joke to us. Y'all people in hell doesn't say, well, I wish somebody would abduct me. They do two things. They abduct and they abduct it. These are these women. These are these women that said they took me on a ship and they saw that I was so attractive that they wanted to have my baby, so they did it to me. Right? Then there's other people who say they took me up there and they experiment on me, they were sticking tubes in my head and stuff, and then I don't know what happened after that. These other people say they sat down and told me I'm special, and they're going to take me off to heaven with them. What are some of the other ones? Anybody got any of them? Yeah. They said to inform the world that you human beings are messing up and you better turn around and change things before it's too late. Right? Yep. What else? Anybody they else? People come back with metallic objects in them and stuff. Yeah. Say that again, brother? People come back with metallic like objects all over their I have one of those. Let me hear. Right. That's where blood the came from. Huh? Showing signs yeah. of the future. They, they sometimes project a screen for you to see like they do me. And I can foresee things are going to come in hundreds of years. And I come tell y'all. And then they come back, come to pass. And I, then y'all still say, it's crazy. Who else? Do you know how many of them are walking on the planet Earth as human beings? Passing themselves off as humans? Mixing into the society of man? Not only good ones. They want to use humans for food, some of them. Don't feel bad. Chickens feel that way about you. You're just another part of the chain of life. You sit down and eat a, a curry let goat. How do you think goats feel? You got them locked in your yard inside a gate. Raise them to kill them, to cut them, to eat them. And then when a couple of y'all get abducted, and some extra treasures put you somewhere and raise y'all to cut you to eat you. Maybe they don't curry you or barbecue. They might got some other term they use. You feel like they're ain't right. <laughs> Almost anybody on television says the same thing. It ain't right. You can't just do you just can't do that to people. <laughs> Isn't that what they say? <laughs> That's not right. They just came in my bedroom and took me out and just did things to me. Some people liked it. Some people hated it. Everyone waits for the exit dressing late night. But it is happening. And don't let. Don't let yes. What does it mean when you wake up and you have sweat all over your face? I didn't hear you. 
Well, it doesn't mean when you wake up and you have scratches all over your body. Could mean you have a cat this matter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just starting from the bottom. Okay. You got to start from the root. Oh, true, but I don't know, really. So it could be a cat that's mad at you, right? <laughs> I got no cat. All right. It could be entities that are messing with you. They do have disembodied beings that do, that do have the power to affect things on this side. And they attack people, shove people downstairs, scratch people up. There are a lot of dead people that did not make it to the other side. And they're roaming. People down Georgia here that were hung. Grabbed out their houses, some of our grandfathers, I have folks in Griffin, that was, I mean, young people too young. Anybody here over 35 or 40 that's from the South knows what I'm talking about. Where crackers came and grabbed them out their houses at night and hung, castrated, and burnt their relatives right in front of everybody in the family. And nobody could do nothing. The trauma of that kind of death makes it impossible for the spirit to get to the other side. It can't make a smooth transition. They become in-embodied souls trapped on this side. And they terrorize. Do you know when they dug up Mega Evans' body? Remember his wife had it dug up? It was totally preserved. As if it never had been embalmed. Did y'all know that? Don't trust me. You know me. Don't believe me. Go check that out. You'd be amazed. When they dug up his body after that many years, his body was perfectly Preserved. Will. He did not want to perish until the case was solved. And they assumed his body and they solved the case. You said? I bet you his body will start to wither now. That's the power of God in you. Not of God. You as God can make that happen. Can you imagine that? Every Pharaoh would tell you his secret. A hell of a lot. <laughs> Anybody else want to talk about it? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> I have a question. Well, it's more like advice. Um, but th three weeks ago, I was uh, experienced a ringing in my ear. I get them frequently, but this one was like intense. And now I can't hear, or it's like pressure is in my left ear. I was wondering, has anyone come to you? About All the time all the time, and especially around this part of the year because of the pollen. See, there's a lot of pollen in the air, more so than ever because there's a, a what do you call it, a, a cloud mass that's keeping the pollen in. The pollen, because of the, the weather we had, and all the plants are overdeveloped. So a lot of people are pouring into the hospitals with sinus problems, cold like you wouldn't believe, headaches, migraines, ringing in their head, and it's because of the pollen. Your father, I'm not saying that's your case, but you ask me, have I heard of any? And when I do, I say, yes, I go take some contracts and the ringing to go away. And they say, okay, and they go take the contracts and they tell me, oh, the ringing went away. Yours might be something different. I don't know. Because it's like, I don't know, I'm thinking maybe over You have a hole in your ear? Yes. Both of them are one? One on the right. On the right ear? Okay, go ahead. It's like I'm, I'm afraid. Cause don't, I don't be afraid. I don't want to go to the doctor. Don't be afraid. The doctors can't tell you nothing. That ring in your ear is alignment. Okay. People with holes in their ear over here, no, some no, no. have one, some have two. That's, those are people that are going, uh, for, I'm trying to think of another word for it. Uh, I, I can't think of anything else other than the word counselor. When the, when the elders come, when God comes, right, and the voice of God is spoken, it's going to be in sound, not in language. And these people who are being aligned are going to be the ones that tell people where to go. You, those are chosen people, and they will be said, they'll hear voices in their head. Now, some people hear voices in their head now and end up in the nut house. <laughs> but the reality of that is that it's a fact that people can hear voices in their head. You understand my point? <laughs> The fact that doctors will put people in the hospital and put them on certain types of uh, medication because doctors have come to the conclusion that yes, certain people do hear voices in their head. Wait, Vaughn? Yes. yes, they do. Yes. And have went out and killed people because the voice has said, go kill somebody. 
Say it again. They blame it on And they'll blame it on Tupac. There you go. <laughs> Remember that one, right? Hear up, this is the reality. Go ahead. Uh, you said there's other entities that come in. And uh, they are um, camouflaged into human beings. Right? They're people. No, no. They're beings that are descending to earth. Mm -hmm. Extraterrestrials, disagreeables. Right? In the form of human beings. Not descending into human beings. They, uh, they won't come in and take our body. They're not walking. They are actually people that are here on earth like heads of record companies, heads of the movies, controlling the lives of many people. I'm not going to say Michael Jackson because everybody wants me to say Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson is a confused nigga. I ain't talking about you. People that are in power like Bill Gates, right, who's controlling. When he, when he held back, how many people are into computers? The other day when he held back Windows 90, what? Everybody went, what? You was like affected emotionally. How dare them hold back Windows 98? I need that. What? Um, didn't, really, didn't you have an emotional effect? You was like waiting to go to the store. Car, got the gas, the key. We're going out to the video store and get this 98. And I would have been the rest of your day putting it in, storing it. And they held it back and said, wait a minute. We're not sure we're going to release it. Just long enough to frustrate everybody, then Bill Gates said, okay, it's going out. What's the point? Control. Mind control. Yes. All right. Uh, what I was trying to lead to was, just suppose that you can see these beings that are camouflaging themselves. What is happening to you? They're not camouflaging themselves, Sam, bro. They're walking around every day with you. I can point out some of them. The guy comes on television all the time. He teaches all the stars about how to make money and all that. Oh, oh, oh. You can see he's a venerian. About seven, almost seven feet tall. Oh, he's a truck. The whole lot of them give me There's so many of them out there now, and they are controlling the lives. L. Ron Hubbard. Yeah, control, Dianetics, these are organizations, the Scientology movement, these are groups of extraterrestrials from the Platius or Aldebaran or Ashtar Command that have incarnated here and are staring people down a certain direction. And they become extremely numb. Yes, brother. Oh, I have one. You don't need the mic. I have another related question. Okay. All right. I'm pretty sure you know about the book of Barbara. I sure do. Barnabas. The way it said Barnabas. Barnabas. Yeah, they tricked that too perfectly. So you don't understand Bar and Nabus, what it means. But My question is, which son is actually the seed of um, the blessed child is? Is it Isaac or is it Israel? I mean, okay. Isaac is the rightful heir. That's, the, that's according to the Tanakh, or the Torah, and the Talmud writings of the so-called Jew, Isaac. Ishmael is not the rightful heir. Only further down in history did they say in, about the sons of Ishmael that there will be a mighty nation, 12 princes, and the tribe of Kedar shall, shall breed a great nation. Kedar, which is the second son of Ishmael, gave birth to Muhammad of 1400 years ago in Arabia and took the Arabs out of a backward state, if you ever read up on Islam, the state they were in, and civilized them only for them to be invaded by Turkish and them, take over Islam and turn it back to the barbaric terrorist religion it is today. That was Isaac is the rightful son. And Ishmael was later as a wild ass of a man because remember, uh, Ishmael was the son of Hagar, and Hagar was the daughter of the Pharaoh. That was a special gift. So they knew that the seed of Ishmael would come out of her and set up and mix in with the seed of Midian. And Midian's seed came from Abraham's third wife, Keturah. And she had six sons. And that's when Moses went to Midian to get taught by them before he went to Egypt. So he got taught by an Ishmaelite about Iliun, Iliun, El, who we later on became known as Yahweh, good and evil. And all that was done to the Ishmaelite, to the Ishmaelite seed, but the covenant was made, was made with Ishmael. I mean, I mean with Isaac to uh, Israel, Jacob, according to the Bible. The Muslims can say anything they want 1,400 years 
for thousands of years after I write the book, <laughs> what would Muslims have said if the Bible wasn't there and they weren't trying to establish a new religion? You follow what I'm trying to say? That, in fact, I graduated from the University of al Azhar in Egypt, specializing in Islamic studies and Semitic languages. So Arabic is one of my languages. So in reading the studies and uh, are doing the research in Arabic, you find out the Muslims in America don't know what they're talking about. And I taught Muslims Arabic for 25 years. And they still don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> okay, when, that was by the Islamic uh, uh, faith. And, uh, is it a such thing as the Sabbath day? Is that, is that yes. There is a such thing as Shabbat. Again, Shabbat is a Hebrew practice that Muslims took in and pushed it to Friday and called it Yomul Juma. The word Yomul Juma really simply means Yom Day El Juma to gather. But Shabbat Yom is also in Hebrew a day of gathering. So the Muslims set it up on Friday at one o'clock, and they go to the masjid and have an imam give a khutbah, a lecture, community fairs, pay zakat, and go home. That's a Christian practice. Come to church, hear a sermon from a prophet, pay your tidings, and go home. Not even Islamic or Hebraic culture. Whereas the Jews, 19 minutes before sunset on Friday night, they enter into a state of Shabbat, which means desisting, not resting, desisting from activities to give all due to the Most High for the blessings that He gives you. And then 19 minutes before sunset on Saturday, they break the Shabbat and light a candle and break the bread and drink the wine, which is supposed to be. That's where the Christians got, Jesus said, the, uh, the wine is my blood and the bread, blood is my flesh. Yes, there is a Shabbat and we are supposed to keep the Shabbat. You follow? Because it goes back all the way to Genesis way before Abraham or Moses never even had a book. So it's, it's, it's recognized as a Judaic practice, but it goes back to the Sumerians. And that goes back to when Cain and Abel was asked by the Anunnaki to prepare a meal to test which way their natures have gone, because they were a product of cloning of agreeable Kuthites, and I mean disagreeable Kuthites, and agreeable Havilites. When they mixed these two seeds to come out with a perfect person, they was testing them to see with effort. So they told both sons, go prepare a feast for the gods. And one son threw it together like a chicken pot pie white. And another one baked the bread from the ground, from the, from the, so the man looked at, the man looked at the woman who baked the bread from, from the, and said that woman put love and care into, I accept that woman. But the woman that goes in the closet and takes the fridge and takes out a frozen dinner and pops it in the pot, the man goes like this. That's what the that's what the Cain and Abel story is about, and that goes all the way back to that that day that Cain uh, was rejected or not respected and Abel accepted was the day of rest because of Cain killing Abel. The gods agreed because they considered it their responsibility. And don't let nobody tell you that God don't grieve because Jesus cried at the tomb of Lazarus. They'll say, you know, you always have an answer for them. When you say, like, the God's grieve, if God don't grieve, then why would Jesus be crying? And why did God say, regret me that I created man? That was another regret because they felt when they came to Cain, before he killed Abel and told Cain, all you got to do is go back in the kitchen and put your best in it. But if you don't, Evil is lying at the door waiting for you. In other words, you're going to get madder and madder. And it says right in the Bible, but his consonants dropped. Yeah. You know what that means? He started soaking like we niggas do when we get mad. <laughs> <laughs> and when we start soaking, when our consonants drop, we lose control. And we find ourselves doing some things that we never thought we would do and we regret forever. That's what that story is really talking about. All right? Go ahead. Jealous God. I've seen that in, uh, Say that again. Say it again. I am. Jealousy. Yes, there's a such thing as a jealous God. When God says, worship me and me alone, 
What is he saying? First of all, he's confessing that there must be other gods. His equal. See, in Islam, they make the statement and they say Allah is the most merciful. And the question should be out of what? Because if you're the only God, and the only God with that kind of power, then you should have no fear of rivalry. If I was the only cowboy, I don't have to worry about there being no other cowboys. But if there's other cowboys, and I want your full attention, I say have no other cowboy, because if you do, I'm jealous. Because I'm the cowboy that gave you your cowboy suit. I made you my image after my likeness, so don't go off to no other God. That, that confession in the Bible tells you there's other gods, that God is worried about them. Yeah. <laughs> that God and I'm jealous. Don't worship nobody but me. <coughs> How can God get jealous of another being? Unless this, there are other beings equal to them. Muslims say all the time, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ta'ala la sharik Allah. They say, I bear witness what? There's only one God, Him alone shall you worship. Right? La ilaha illallah. There's no God but Allah, they say. Why would I have to keep saying that? I worship Allah alone. I worship Allah alone. There's no God but you. There's no God. You are Akbar. Allahu Akbar. What is the translation? To them. Allah is the, the greatest. To them. The greatest out of what? How could God be the greatest of anything? How can he be compared to anything? Or, you know what I'm saying? See, their, their very own doctrine is a confession of their own fears and weaknesses. The almighty, powerful, loving being that terminates to all of us has no fear of nothing. Cannot be challenged. Cannot be altered cannot be added to, and cannot be taken away from. That's why we here in the Nawapians refer to him as, or I shouldn't even say him, we refer to him as the all. The all. And the all is defined as relating to this side, our physical. It will be just all when we shed the physical and we live in an ethnic or spiritual state. But as long as we're in the physical, where things must be, must be defined by some for weight, then we become definite articles. The, the God. And that's why when you ask a Muslim to translate the word Allah, they say, El Ilah, the God. You see, that's a definite article, a noun. A noun is a person. So how can he be the God a noun, and then be a lady in Arabic, unseen. Anything that is a person, place, or thing can be seen. So the Quran in the next verse says to believe in the lady, the unseen thing, something, nothing. You see that? Right. Something, density, weight, content. To sum, they spell it S O M E when they want to spell it S U M T H I N G. Something. Anything that is something has weight. You follow that? Anything that exists without weight is nothing. No thing. No is abbreviated N O as number without weight or content, before hydrogen. So the divine exists in a world of nothingness. And we exist in a world of something, and then some things. And God is the something, and we are the some. And that's why we are called beings, and he's called the supreme being. You follow? And that is all on the physical side of things. But to get to the bosom, you must get past the physical world and into the ethnic world, which is nothing. No weight. No density. No space. And if they say that's impossible, then tell me how love makes people kill each other. 
You can't weigh love. Right? But you can feel love. And a broken heart can kill a man. Give a man a cardiac arrest. His heart will, will cease to function because a woman leaves him or vice versa. And they call and say, he died of a crack, broken heart. Where the untangible becomes tangible. It affects the tangible. 